Throughout the centuries, there have been many people who were considered to have been regicides or king killers. Following the end of the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell and those who signed the death warrant of King Charles I were considered to have been regicides, and later Charles II would seek to execute those who put his father to death, which resulted in the exhumation of Oliver Cromwell and his dead body being dragged through the streets of London before it was hacked to pieces. But inside of France, there was a bloody history of executions with the French Revolution, but over 150 years before the revolution broke out, there was unrest against the French monarchy. There was one Frenchman who in 1610 managed to assassinate the French king, Henry IV. But following this, he was subjected to a horrific execution, where he was literally torn to pieces by horses. Join us today as we look at Francois Ravaillac's execution, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Francois Ravaillac was born around 1578, and his family were considered well off and educated. His father was a prosecutor of the local area, and he was responsible for law and order, but his two uncles were also canons of the local cathedral. They were well thought of, however his father Jean was a very violent man, who attracted a significant amount of controversy and public scandal. His actions caused legal issues for the family, but Francois's mother was known for being a very strong and pious Catholic woman. But Francois Ravaillac began to work as a servant inside of a house, and he later became a schoolteacher and an educator. But he became incredibly obsessed by religion, and was a very strong Catholic, and he tried to become a member of the Fulant Order, but he managed to initially get in, but was then told to leave, as it was said he was prey to visions. He then applied in 1606 to become part of the Society of Jesus, and was rejected for this. The followers of this were known as Jesuits, and throughout many countries they were believed to have been dangerous, and Elizabeth I would sentence a number of Jesuits to death, and a few prominent ones such as John Gerard were even imprisoned inside the Tower of London. But in 1609, Ravaillac stated that he had experienced a vision, in which he had been told to try and convince the French King Henry IV to convert the Huguenots to Catholicism. With this vision, Francois then made three separate trips between Pentecost 1609 and May 1610 to visit the King in Paris, to tell him of these visions, and he lodged with Charlotte de Tillet, the mistress of a powerful member of the French nobility. But of course Ravaillac was refused a meeting with the kings, and was frustrated by this, and he then tried to force the issue. At the time he believed Henry IV's decision to invade the Spanish Netherlands was a declaration of war against the Vatican, the Pope, and also the Catholic Church, and he took great offence to this. Because of this, he then began to formulate a plan to kill the French king. At this time, Henry IV had reigned for around 21 years, and he was seen as an active ruler who did some good for the French people. He helped to bring an end to corruption and encouraged education as well as promoting farming, and he tried to bring together Protestants and Catholics in his country, bringing an end to the French wars of religion. But he had also been the target of 12 assassination attempts before, However, Francois Ravaillac, the Catholic zealot, would be successful in his attempt. On the 14th of May 1610, Ravaillac was waiting in the Rue de la Ferronnerie in Paris, and as he waited the king's carriage went past him. As the king crossed his path, Ravaillac emerged from the crowd, and the carriage was stopped because of a blockage in the street. He then drew out his knife and stabbed Henry IV to death. It was said his coach, entering from saint Honore to Ferronnery Street, was blocked on one side by a cart filled with wine, and on the other by a cart filled with hay. Ravaillac climbed on the wheel of the above-named coach, and with a knife trenchant on both sides stabbed him between the second and third ribs. The Duke of Montbazon, who was riding with the king at the time, was also wounded by Ravaillac, but the assassin was then immediately grabbed by the king's guards, and was then taken to the Hotel de Retz, as there was an incredibly angry crowd gathering, and it was believed they would have lynched him. He was then moved to the Conciergerie, a prison in Paris, and was then, during his imprisonment, tortured a number of times. The guards wanted him to name any accomplices, and were convinced that he did not work alone, but Ravaillac was insistent that he was a lone assassin, that he was not part of a wider conspiracy. He was shown to have been a man who studied the king's movements, 
and he knew that the carriage would get blocked at that specific moment, and then he knew he could strike. The king at the time was visiting an ill duke, and he was about to make final preparations for military action in the disputed succession of the Eulich Clevesberg following the death of the duke. Rabbi Eckert's believed learned of these plans, and it would have brought France into a war with the Catholic Habsburg dynasty, and it's believed that when he heard this he made his mind up to act. He said he had seen the king wanted to make war on the Pope, in order to transfer the Holy See to Paris. But at the start of his interrogation he said, I know very well he is dead, I saw the blood on my knife and the place where I hit him, but I have no regrets at all about dying because I have done what I came to do. With this he was sentenced to death, and was considered a disgusting regicide who has shown a significant degree of planning in his attack on the French king. On the 27th of May 1610, his execution would be carried out in front of a huge crowd. He was sentenced to a horrific ordeal, and before his execution, he was tortured once more in front of the thousands who had gathered there. Before he was executed, he was scalded with burning sulphur, molten lead and boiling oil and resin, and his flesh had been cut open by pincers, and then this was poured in, and it was incredibly painful, and his screams would have been heard for miles. However, his death sentence would be completely barbaric. As he was seen as a regicide and the worst form of criminal, he was subjected to a horrific execution. He was to be drawn and quartered, but would be pulled apart by horses. Following his torture, his limbs were tied to four horses, who then, when the execution was ready, were driven off in different directions, and his limbs were ripped from his body. This was incredibly brutal, and there would have been very little left of him. But following his execution, his family were placed under a great amount of shame, and his parents were forced into exile, and his family had to change their name, never using the surname Ravaillac again. But Francois Ravaillac was a disturbed individual who devoted himself to his faith, to the point where he had visions that had been sent to kill the French king. He was clearly a man who was ill, and who made a brutal mark on history. If he had been accepted into the Jesuits or the other orders, then chances are he could have been reformed. But he went down a dark path of assassination, of which he is remembered today, for being the man who killed King Henry IV. But his execution was one which was truly barbaric, being literally ripped to pieces by horses. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.